He is awesome. He is great. Shabaragadu. Shabra kapuku sukutu ya karababa. Rimbranda la bakuri mahanda la gada. Ribabububu kusukuturu bushikaburia. Let's appreciate him. He has never failed. He will not fail. Kalibaba. Limbru kuturu bushikaturia. Bukuru bubu bushababa. Rikaturu kutumuku sukutu ya baba. Reba baba bakuru musimbra katili bushikaburia. Reba bububu. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for whom you are. Lord, you have never failed. You will not fail. Thank you for we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the thanks. We ask that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead will minister to our lives. We bring us to that which is your plan and will upon our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we sit down, can we read this scripture? No, those carrying children, sit down. Amen. Sit down. And the Lord, this is Genesis chapter 11, verse 6 and 7. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. The people, the people, they are one. And they have all one language. They are speaking the same thing. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Another version said, and now it will not be possible to keep them from any purpose of theirs. Who was saying this? Jehovah himself. Jehovah says, these people are one. And they have one language. And they have one purpose. And there is nothing we can do. God is saying it himself. Do you know why he said? It's not as if he can't stop them. But he has already issued a decree. That anyone that has one la Any people that have la one language. Anyone that have. Any people person or two people coming together that their language is one and they have one purpose. He said there is nothing impossible. He said even me because I have already said it. I have said it and I can never withdraw from what I have said. He said because they are one. They have one language. Say there shall nothing shall be impossible. Even me, I cannot stop it because I cannot lie. Nothing shall be because they have one language, one purpose. Look at it. I read the version again. You say nothing that they have in mind to do will be impossible for them. Another version. You say then nothing they plan to do will be beyond them. Another version. He says. They can build this tower. What they do after this. Another version said. Nothing will be withheld from them. Which they intend to do. God himself said. I can't stop it. Because they have one language. One purpose. Church again. Be seated. You know, we are in Australia now. Thank God. Some arrogant ones and people that are ignorant of how life works that are in Australia now, they'll be thinking they are better than people that are in Africa. If you, are, if you have that mindset, you are a fool. If you think because you are in Australia, you are better than anybody, any other place in the world, even in the cockroach land, you are not better than that person. A rabbit 
in Africa is a rabbit in Australia. There are even people that were wiser in, in Africa, but when they came to Australia, they are, fo- they are dotting rays, foolish dotting rays, smelling rays. The worst thing you can do for yourself is to think because I'm in Australia. I'm better than anybody in Africa. You are a fool. <clears throat> because where you are is not what defines you. It is whom you are that defines where you are. Your mindset. I was listening to Australian news today. And some of us don't take time to go. That's why in my house, I have a room where I listen to news. It's just the same. That's also where I do my prayers. To tell you how important it is for me to be current in the things of Australia. How Bishop I say, don't limit yourself only in reading Bible. Also listen to news. Read other books to, so that you understand the Bible well what the Bible is saying. And I was listening to news. Today, they say the Australian money has never gone down since the past 30 years. The down it went today. Not only that, too significant, because God will always move me to listen to news Things that I need because Australian news, <laughs> anything new, they talk. Even when somebody poo poo first time, they talk. It's news. <laughs> anything news means new. Even somebody that have not cough, cough before. <laughs> if we cough the first time, news <laughs> in Australia, nonsense things. So if you are not careful, you only listen to junks. But if God moves you to listen, you get the right message. And they had a kind of an economy analyst. Somebody that analyzes um, the economy. And they asked him a question. You were here 10 years ago to analyze Australian economy. And now you're back again after 10 years. What can you say about Australian economy? He said 10 years ago, Australia was on the high rise among the nations that everything they were planning was just moving the way they want or wanted it. And they were trying to make a difference in the world. And they were among the countries that the world was looking at to be a full of you know, success. Then they asked the man today, he said, that thing they were planning 10 years ago is still in their DNA. Does that make sense? They still have it in their blood. But I'm not sure <laughs> with the way things are going that they will still achieve it. But 10 years ago, I was very sure they would have achieved it. But now, I'm not sure with the way things are going. Now, people that have depended on Centrelink, that this is my life, this is everything, they are now trying to enact a law that until you give account of the, how you use the other one, <laughs> they will not give you the next one. So if you are getting $200, you must finish it <laughs> that way. Give them good account of it before they give you the next 200. So it means if you don't finish it with good account, they will not give you the next one. I'm only trying to tell you that there is nothing that will make Australia economy better. This is the way. What we are trying to do, what the government, they are trying to do now is to see some of the extra money they spend or kind of waste. They want to see how they can stop it. It's because 
there's no more. I told you what happened when I went to f- post office and I was, somebody saw me. He was so angry with me. He has looked at my skin. He has seen I'm from Africa. So he saw me as a parasite and he didn't hide it. The Australia doesn't have money again. We don't have money to spend for you people again. We don't have money to. He was very angry. Thank God he wasn't aborigine. And you have, you, have you had the latest testimony about Australia, the real owner of Australia? They say they are from Ethiopia. <laughs> Before the aborigine. The man talking to me and I was shy, we don't have money again. He was English. Now, why am I saying all this? Is? You will be a fool. To still depend on the flesh for your greatness and for your success in life. That's why we are making a difference. We don't, I don't rely on other stuff. I don't rely on man. I've never relied on any man. I don't compete. Because we don't have the same assignment. Every, everyone on earth has different assignment. So it's not the way you got your own. It's the way I'm going to. I look unto God. They offer and they finish out of my faith. Now if you ask. How will I achieve? If Australian system. If I depend on it will fail me. Somebody was asking me. I was having a chat today. And he said, uh, is it the only work you do? I said, I'm a full-time pastor, reverend minister, me and my wife. We are missionaries. He said, really? Yeah, I said, I only do it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday for my studies. He said, what are your other plans? I said, uh, me and my wife, we have done seven years in Malaysia, missionary work. We are not per se planting churches. We are encouraging the body of Christ. We went to Malaysia. We served there. We served Apostle Henry Pillai. And after some time, he said, go and start your own. He gave us rent for five months. He was the one that asked us to go. He sent us to Puchong. He paid our rent for five months. He gave us 100 chairs. And when his members saw it, they came and supported us. I said, we do, don't go per se to start our church because we go to join the body of Christ. We come there, we know there is a branch already in Malaysia. We follow the branch of the body of Christ. We walk with them. We integ- in, 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 integrate integration. Uh-huh integrate with them. That's your business. Thank God you understand my, what I'm talking about. I'm not part of, you know, the, sometimes I see people because of English, because of this, they, 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 why are you like that? Is it your first language? They make mistake and make, why are you make? Why, what, is, what is all about that? I don't look at now, I look at the end. You see, because, you think because I speak long grammar, I'll be ashamed. Oh boy, come here at CNN. Whether I get it or not get it, it's your business. Thank God you understand it. I've already paid. I paid, I went to secondary school, paid them to teach me English. I went to, you know, <laughs> I'll go to school. So I've done my best. Are you getting it? It's not my first language. It cannot, cannot stop me. I cannot be ashamed of making mistake in English. For what? Is it my first language? When I was born, what I knew was, nya, nya. I started with that. Then they told me my real language is Igbo. I have people already when you are speaking, you, everybody cannot be happy with you. Why are you trying, carrying a lot of burden when you are before people? My children, learn it though. Forget about this life. It's not all these grammar, physical things. All these, these are nonsense. And people understand. That's what you call body language. Do you know when you are trying to speak good English, you lose your body language. But when you don't allow that burden, 
there are people that will understand what you're saying through your body language more than what you're saying with your mouth. Does that make sense? Don't allow anything to stop you. This life is now. When you go to heaven, you will see that would have been a fool to allow all these things to stop us from being whom we are supposed to be or doing what God. To, 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 I don't want to deviate. Does that make sense? So I told the guy we did, and we've done eight years in Australia, and I'll be going to Canada. I want to do Canada and Israel. And he said, oh, so how will you, where will you retire? I said, I will retire in Africa. I will retire in my country, Biafra. He said, what of your family? I said, my family has made their choice. They want to stay in Australia. They love Australia. And actually, Australia was where God told me. So they feel free to stay in Australia. Do you know why that mindset is, is a priority? It's because they, what people are seeing in Australia, I've not seen it. I thank God for Australia giving me a platform. To understand a lot of things. To be comfortable to learn. That's one thing better in Australia than Africa. You are comfortable to learn. There is no strike. <laughs> there is no government problem. All this chasing you. So you are comfortable to learn what you are supposed to learn. And the guy said, wow. I have this contact if you want it. It's a company I worked with 20 years ago. And they are interested in Africa. Look at their product. Look at how good it is. Look at the difference between these. I was just, I said, can you give me their contact? He gave me the, I'm telling you, it's awesome. It's awesome company. Product we would have gotten in Africa. In fact, I, let's leave it his business. I pocketed it. I took it from him. Now, what am I saying? I want to ask a question. Now we have found out that depending on the government of Australia, we are in Australia, thank God for that. But depending on the government of Australia, will we be able to achieve exactly the will of God for our lives? I keep on telling you, you watch with your eyes, you will see it if God tarries, if Jesus did not come. You will see it when I will finish building 20,000 Sita Church. He's not building it for, he's building it so that at least one year when I retire from Africa, in a year I will visit, I don't need to go travel everywhere. I just have convention maybe two times in a year with all my children in Australia. 5,000 from Israel, 5,000 from Canada, 5,000 from Malaysia, and the rest from Australia. I will have time and teach them seminar because I need to be. Now you see, you also watch because there's no way I will lose my children to the first world if I don't build the academy I need to build. I'm building it so that they will still have when they leak Africa. Oh, I'm a chancellor of one of the biggest universities there. Let me go and see what is happening. And I know with glory, if we're able to channel glory to Africa, she will bring, she will draw all her siblings. She has that charisma. She has that quality to do that. You know very well, all we need is just to bend her understanding. And before you know it, oh, she will not, any choice she's making, she will consider Africa, consider Australia, consider Malaysia. Boom. That's why. And if I don't do it, I can't. I've lost them to first world system. First world. We have good things from Africa, good things from Malaysia, good things from Australia. First world country. But my question still remains, because we are doing our all night, and the topic tonight, power to overflow in every ramification of life, in every facet of life, power to overflow. 
So how will you achieve this? Let's say, for example, 20,000 sister church in Australia. Academy in Africa. You know, know me now. You should check in my bank account. It's as if what I'm saying is story. But watch out. Because the beginning of every success starts with the right conversation. So how will you do it? We have a challenge now. This is the will of God for our life. God has finished this. This is already settled in the spirit. How will we bring it to pass? Will we depend, continue to depend on Australian system? Will we continue to depend on education? That's another thing. Yes, yes, go to school, go do PhD, but no permanent head damage. <laughs> so how are we going to achieve it? Church, I'm here to tell you, Australian government will fail you. Church, I'm here to tell you again, education will fail you. But if you know how to generate power to overflow, that's the remedy. Does that make sense? All things are possible unto those that believe. And that is why I want to share with you and activate in your mind that all you need is the power to overflow. And God has declared to every CGM mind that October is our season of overflow. But you need something greater to overflow. Let me share with you. Now, there are two main streams of successes. Two is parallel. But it's two. Personal success and corporate success. Does that make sense? Even in call, when God calls people, there are people he called individually. There are people he called corporately. Moses was a type of corporate call. Moses cannot succeed without the people he's leading succeeding. Moses is a failure. Jesus, corporate call. Apostle Paul, corporate call. He once said that you are the proof of my call. So what does that mean? It means there are nations, there are people, if you are not faithful with your call, their own call is useless. And God will hold you responsible. Our Bishop Bessie was a type of that. He had corporate call. It is in his call that I have joined under covenant. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. God of Abishab Bishop Dahosa. God of Basile, Bishop Basile Edohasem. And God of Pastor Joseph. How did he start? That is why I will always tell you, the only name attached to Church of God Mission, the God of Church of God Mission, is Abishab Bishop Dahosa. God of Abishab Bishop Dahosa. God of Abraham. God of Isaac. God of Jacob. Am I making sense? What is corporate call? Corporate call is more powerful than personal call. Corporate lifestyle or success in Christianity is different. Corporate success is different from personal success. How do you prove that you are a success, you are succeeding personally as a Christian? How do you prove that? One of the ways. Can we, us, can we share? Who can help us? I'm coming. I'll just finish in a moment. Immediately I touch the Bible, we are done. But you have to understand something. Huh? Give me an example of how to prove that your personal Christian life is a success. There are things you need to develop. And when you see it working, it means you are a success. How? The highest level is your prayer life, personal prayer life. 
That's the highest level to prove. If you don't, there's no gimmicks about it. Can you stay in a place of prayer alone? Can you be able to? You don't understand. Do you know from my journey from Nigeria, thus this far, do you know how many times the devil came upon me? Like Paul. Paul said, I wanted to come, but the devil stopped me. Do you know how many times the devil would have stopped me? And Jesus said, Peter, Peter, I'm not praying for everybody. I'm praying for you in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. I pray that your faith, personal, personal, no corporate. Because many are looking unto you. Do you know a lot of things that would have brought me down in Malaysia? Do you know a lot of things? But if I didn't have that passion, and I told you the key I was using, most Idahosa's message, I would read 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Nobody was with me at that time. Nobody, all my children, my family, they were not. But I, was, I knew I was going somewhere. Why was I able personal conviction, personal relationship which they prove is what? Your personal prayer life. So if you are someone that you cannot pray unless you come to a prayer like this, you don't have a personal life. You have failed. You need to develop it. Because there will not always be like this. Before you get look, look at this prayer, it takes a month before we gather. So that personal life. And what is the anointing you can attend? The highest level anointing you can attend in personal life is called the oil of gladness. That's the highest anointing you can attend. When you want to build your personal life. And it's found in Psalms 45 verse 7. Because you have lost righteousness and have hated wickedness. The Lord has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellow. Can you get it to stick whether it's right? 45 verse 7. The Lord has anointed you. This is because you have hated wickedness. Psalms. 45 or 7. You, yeah, read it. Thou lovest righteousness uh-huh. and hatest wickedness. Yes. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness. It's oil of gladness. And in, 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 in Romans chapter 14 verse 23. Yeah, read it. I mean 14 verse 17. Romans 14 17. For the kingdom of God is not in meat yes. and drink. Yes. But righteousness. Righteousness, one level. And peace. Second level, next level. And joy in the Holy Ghost. Oil of gladness. Joy in the Holy Ghost. That's it. And I'm here to tell you, you cannot achieve building 20,000 seater church with oil of gladness. It's just for personal. It's just for your faith not to fail. But if you want to achieve the anointing of getting building 20,000 Sita Church and having a university academy, you need what? Corporate anointing. Does that make sense? That is why anytime I'm in Nigeria or when God settles me, I can never miss convention in Nigeria. Why? For corporate anointing. Another way I can gather it is as I'm building this church now. Now we start doing uh, like we are doing women conference next year. It's not just we are doing women conference. It's a time to gather corporate anointing. It's a time to break. Does that make sense? Are you getting it now? 
Now you need your personal life because it's not every time that you have corporate opportunity for corporate anointing and power. You also need corporate. Otherwise, you're going nowhere. But church, do you know why I'm doing this topic this morning, this evening, this night? What's, is, it, is, my, is it correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not up to 12, right? We're nearly there. Do you know why I'm doing it? Do you know our church, this church, this church that started with personal anointing is now a corporate anointing church. Kabush kabaragada. Yabo kababa kuntikeria. And do you know why? What makes it corporate? The fivefold are involved. The fivefold. When the fivefold are involved, the Bible says, "For with this, this is for the for the defying of the church, edification of the church. This is the only way the church cannot be moved to and fro when corporate the fivefold." are in place. So when we do the gathering of the gate, the fivefold are definitely, but do you know even as we are now, we have the fivefold and we are growing from personal to what? Corporate. And do you know what God says when you get to corporate anointing? He said, look at them because they have one language. Kabush, kaba, katakara, makaya, kaka. Because they have one purpose. He said, there shall be nothing impossible. A church, I'm here to announce to you because of the power to overflow in corporate anointing. I don't know what you have been planning. One of my sons want to be a blessing to Liberia. He prepare because the power to overflow in it has just arrived. It's not an impossible thing. To be president of Biafra is not something you do achieve with personal. It's corporate. I'm here to tell you, I keep on telling you, I can see it manifesting. Why? Because the power to overflow in it has been made available. Look at, imagine when we started this ministry, 11th of December 2011, it wasn't easy. We tried to get together with corporate anointing. It would be broken. It would be broken until 2014. I said, God, the Bible says you shall overturn three times. <laughs> if you overturn again the fourth time, now I don't want to lead the way. You lead the way. Show me. Break away three times. That's the highest for any genuine man of God. After three times, Bible permitted three times, I shall overturn, I shall overturn, I shall overturn. And 2014, I said, Lord, this is the fourth. And it was on the 4th of May, 2014. I said, this is the last overturn. I can't bear it any longer. If it passes this, I said, God, I will not sleep on my bed. No comfort for me again until you stop this overturn. And today, God, 2014, what happened? God said, okay, I've had you. You want me to lead the way? I will lead the way. And I will build your personal call now to become a corporate anointing, a corporate push cup. Church, you will not understand. But soon, when you start enjoying the power that overflows, the power, Kirada Kusakatea, the product of what we are building today, you will know. Sometimes you'll be amazed. Why is it happening? Do you think I'm making sense? Do you think I'm going somewhere? We can never achieve feeding the whole Liberia or being a blessing to the nation of Liberia with only personal anointing. It can never happen. One which is a thousand. But when you enter into corporate anointing, two which is 10,000. Now, what of if now we are 200? You see the rate? One, 1,000, two, 10,000, which is how many percent? 
This is God who multiplied ten times. So three will be what? Will be hundred thousand. Four will be one one million. I mean times ten. Hundred thousand. How many zeros? Hundred thousand. It's five. Four will be one million. Five will be what? Oh my God. Now what of when we are 20? Now church, what am I saying? Look at what is happening in this church. When we started, none of you had car. Is that not true? None of you. You just came. I know when, when I saw uh, Vani the first time, he was, what is happening? He was looking through the window. I'm telling you, the first time I, I met his mother was the first time I met him. But you, he was just like that David, you know. God was sending me to her, to his mother. But actually it was to Vani, not her, his mother. And the prayer I prayed for her that they walked wonders. She was having this problem, her mother. And after that, she, her faith grew. And she said, I'm going to stop taking all these drugs, all this stuff. His son was watching. I believe it was God. Because he's not Pastor Joseph. I'm only a messenger of God. He's the one that built. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we on? Amen. Are you getting it? So when God sent me to the mother, I came and did the needful. But not knowing that it was Vani, that really God was targeting. And who knows how God did his stuff. And God captured the heart of Vane. I think when I visited their house, it was supposed to be 2013, is that? Yeah. And 2014, not knowing God has already finished everything, this young man became serious. Before you know it, this one wanted to pull down Catholic Church. I said, come my son. I saw the, that was how God introduced him to me. He said, what they are teaching, did that, that. I said, no, I understand your passion. But this is where you belong. I said, watch my life because I also have that anger. I want people to teach the truth. I don't want people to keep on lying and doing all this. I said, but the problem with Catholic Church is not the members, it's the leaders. Come, because he needed to learn under me. That was how I knew that God was sending him. Because I have that same anger. I have that same. And before you know it, we started coming together. The gathering of the eagles. The fivefold. He's a pastor. He's an evangelist. I'm praying for him to be stable. He's a teacher. My wife is a prophet. And I'm an apostle. What is lacking now? Nothing. The fivefold. Ready to explode. The only one we are praying on to be stable is the teacher among us. We are really praying for you. And what has started happening? Every one of us have started seeing 
Now, what is success? What is success? How do you explain success? That's where we miss it. We believe success is you go out there, you pick something and bring it. No. Success is discovering whom God has created you to be. You are not adding anything. Rather, you are losing. You are missing. Now your ability to hold God for you not to miss or lose anything is success. Now imagine this is God's call for my life. Australia is where God has called me to be. The work I'm doing now is for nobody can it can it can never be hard that I lost my job. Does that make sense? How will I fail? How will I not prosper? If the church fail, if I, my business, I lose it. But what is happening? They are new every morning. Why? I'm not adding anything. I'm just discovering. What should I do to keep my job? What should I do to keep the church going? What should I do? That's success. So you, if you feel what you are doing is to go and gather something and bring into your life, you are wasting your time. Before the foundation of the earth, God finished you. He created you. He has, oh, the Bible says, to those he has called, he has justified. And to those he has justified, he has glorified. So all the success you are looking for is already with you. But you have to discover it. You don't, why is it that God made it that it's going to be our choice whether to live his will or to gather our own or do? Because when he created beings, that had no choice. When they discover choice, they say, God, that was the problem you made. If the mistake you made. The mistake you made was, you didn't give us choice to choose. And God now said, I'm going to create another being that will rule above the being I created before. And I'll give them choices. I will still program them, my way for them, do everything. But if they decide to live my will, I mark it good for them. Let me tell you, in your own achievement, you're only planning to get one dollar compared to, but in God's achievement, it's more than 200 billion. For my thought, it's not of evil, but of good that you have that expected end. So, why am I talking about this overflow? Power. To overflow. You, can, you cannot get it with only anointing of joy. Oil of, it's for you. It's for you to brace yourself and not to fail. And not to miss it. But corporate anointing is for exploit. It's for building the body of Christ. It's for corporate achievement. You see, I had a dream on the 23rd of October. But now I understand what that dream is. I wouldn't have, those snakes wouldn't have died. I woke up, you know, normally in that dream. At the back of, is a fence. There's always noise because such animals are there fighting, you know, trying to. So nobody goes there in the dream. So, but now in the dream, there have been silence there for some days. Now, in that, in that our house, we don't just come out anyhow so that those snakes will not divorce. But I said, no, I've not had, maybe anaconda or dinosaur, you know, this kind of thing, fighting. I've not. So I decided to go and check. When I came there, it wasn't only me. Church members, I'm telling church. I told when I was telling my wife, church members, church members were with me with their cutlasses. I was coming; they were coming from the other side. And when I come, I saw I couldn't believe it. All the snakes were dead. Big anacondas; they were all there smelling. You know when snake die. There are other ones that come out of the, the, 
they, they eat the womb, open and come out. So that was what happened. And do you know, as they were coming out, the church had enough knife to be killing them. We were just macheting them. It, was, it wasn't a battle. The men have died. And the church was just, those small ones were not, even one of the people that visited, we had visitors, somebody we know from Malaysia. He saw one of the snakes and was using it to play. He said, this one cannot bite. And it was true, he was using it, he couldn't bite. But every one of us had enough knife and they were not, they were so tired. They were just simple. We were just chopping their head. The small, small ones. Church, I'm here to tell you that God has revealed to me what that dream is. It means the church now is no more operating on ordinary power. We are now operating in corporate anointing where two or three are gathered in my name. I am in their midst. And if they shall agree as touching anything, it shall be. That dream is talking about this church. God showed me the level and the future of this church. It's no more. Mayakatayaba. Because they are one. Any anaconda they want to kill is possible. Now, do you know how it's going to affect you? It means from now henceforth, Whatever you want to achieve, let's say you get married, you get into your business, nothing will ever happen to it because it's no more your personal power controlling it, but it's not the corporate power. Does that make sense? It means from now henceforth, anything against you, heaven is against that. Anything that says you will not move forward. God said there is nothing impossible for these people. The kind of joy I got. You know, what activated this revelation was when you test to me and say, Pastor, I have gotten my pee. Imagine all of you. Vani now has been, oh, Vani, God will bless you. He started it alone. He paid the price. Two services. I moved every level. I move you to your successes. I was the one that activated. Even some of you now that have their pass, you have your uh, Australian passport. You were still sleeping. I have to move you. Have you got your Australian passport? Drive, driving. Look at it now. And it's working. It means everything you want to achieve now can never be impossible. There is nothing. Why? Because of the power to overflow. There will be nothing impossible. Now, what, how has it been happening? It was as if it was happening to my family alone. But now your family has been included because you are part of that corporate anointing. Corporate grace. Have I been able to establish something? No Christian will succeed or do exploit with anointing of joy, gladness of joy. It is for you. It is for you when you see things. Now, now, how do I say it? From Nigeria, if I don't have that anointing of joy, we wouldn't, this church wouldn't have come this far. But do you know what is going to happen now? The church has moved to a level of corporate anointing. Which God himself says, because they have one language, because they have one purpose, nothing shall be impossible. What does that mean? If the devil want to keep Pastor Joseph, or dead, come, or even if I die, if they say Pastor Joseph will live, Pastor Joseph will live. You don't understand what we are talking about. There's nothing you will lay your hand from today that will ever fail. I'm excited. I'm excited because seeing this child brain, uh, this brain child, you've seen this vision. The devil fought, we didn't give up. 2014, we started God's a youth. And look at it growing now. Look at it. Imagine where we're going to be in the next 10 years. 
He said, Dika, what is that dream? Because when I came, when I asked my mom, I was still in Malaysia. I said, Mommy, I'm going to Australia. She said, okay, I'll be praying to see what will happen. It wasn't up to one week. She called me and said, I had a dream. Where when you entered Australia, locals, white people came. They took you from the airport. But when they came also, there was big snake. Exactly. That came with them. See, Idika, Idika, if you don't kill that snake, if that snake doesn't die, you will not prosper in Australia. And on the 23rd of October, 2018, in the dream, I saw with my physical eyes, it wasn't only one anaconda snake, it wasn't only two, they were more than three. Dead, smelling. Why? The church that God has given us to grow or to bring that brain child is no more now personal anointing, but now corporate anointing, which Jehovah himself said with his mouth. Because they are one language, because they have one purpose, each akatoya. Church, do you know how we are going to fare? Jimmy, I don't know what you're planning in life. All, the, all, all of you, I don't know what you're planning in life. But you will fail in that your pursuit if we don't have one language. If we don't have one purpose. But I'm here to congratulate you. It doesn't matter how big your vision is. It doesn't matter what God has given to you. It doesn't matter what you have discovered that is the will of God upon your life. If our language be one and the purpose be one, there shall be nothing. There will be nothing. That would be impossible. So stand up. Yeah, ba 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 ba. Kura makoria. We are not talking about corporate anointing going out. We are talking about growing our own corporate anointing. Imagine when this church, by His special grace, look at the members. When you start giving birth to your children, your wife, people coming. Imagine where this church is going to be in the next ten years. The things of the Lord is not magic. It's layer upon layer. It's one block one day. I'm not in a hurry. And I will never because I want to build quality. I don't want to build quantity. I want to build quality. So now you're getting it. It's just like a marriage. When you were alone, you are enjoying your power. I say favor, favor of man. But when you marry, you start enjoying the favor of God. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtain out favor from the Lord. Church, I want to tell you that that future you have been looking for has come. That prosperity, success, no power can stop. God has already finished it. He called us into what he has finished. He's the one that knows the beginning to the end. In the beginning to the end. Are you ready to enjoy the wonders of serving Jehovah? Look at Australia. Every one of us, some foolish one among us, when we see people in Africa, we think we are better than them. Some foolish one among us. Because you are getting money here. Money is nothing. Money is just a reward for us something done. That's not, it's not a proof you are a successful person. So I've seen people that have touched billions. Within the next day, they, they lost it all. It's the life you build. It's the people you build into greatness. Shakaboria, Makoria. This is our season of overflow. Church, I'm here to tell you that your anointing we are talking about. Look at, look at. Imagine when we come to church now and people see almost every one of you is now driving a car. Can't you see it? That you will not miss your level? There's no, no prosperity God has prepared for you that you will miss? The same way it was time for all of you. When you all came here, there, none of you was riding a car. But look at cars outside. When it's time for you to marry, the same way it will happen. When it's time for you to bless your nation, the same way, whatever 
Church, open your mouth and begin to decree. Because of the available corporate anointing, that have brought us thus far, there is no level of my life that I will miss. There is no breakthrough of my life that I will miss. The strength is already there. Power to overflow. I welcome you to the realm I have been enjoying. I welcome you to the realm I departed from, from Nigeria. I was working under a corporate anointing, under Bishop Basile Dohasema. I came to Malaysia. I was able to establish that. Now I'm in Australia. My break area. The Bible says uh, there will be nothing impossible. Uh, from now henceforth, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible for my family. Nothing shall be impossible for my ministry. This is our season of shining. This is our season of overflow. This is our season of shining. Lord, we thank you for the power to overflow. My season of overflow, you know. Lord, I will not miss every, any level uh, in, of success in my life. Uh. Lord, I refuse. Uh, when it's time for me to marry, I will not miss my right wife. I will not miss my right husband. When it's for me to be employed by the government, uh, for that breakthrough, uh, when it's time, oh God, uh, because of the available availability of the corporate anointing, uh, I will not miss my season of power to overflow my season of power to overflow to overflow in success to overflow, oh God, in breakthroughs. Uh, to overflow in health. Uh, Jehovah has already said it. Uh, nothing shall be impossible. Uh, nothing shall be impossible. Now that we have one language. Uh, now that we have one purpose. Uh, failure has missed me. Uh, failure has missed my family. Failure has missed us. No more failure for me. No more failure for me, oh God. No more failure for the church. No more failure for my family. No more failure for my children. Ya 
No more failure for my family. No success is impossible for my family to achieve. Do you really understand? We all build this together. We achieve this success. A success we are faced that are against us. Imagine when my mother told me, I said, you will never succeed in Australia until those snakes are dead. What was my mother saying? She said, don't give up. You need to build a corporate anointing. The anointing that God says. God, he said it in his word. He said, they are one. Look at David when he wanted to destroy Goliath. The Bible says he picked five stones, the five-fold ministry. And he took one of them. I've shared this testimony so many times. In our church, Church of God Mission, about bishopric. Because they five fold, they, they have come to the level of corporate anointing. Power to overflow. One day the bishop was teaching. On the altar, preaching. He had the five fold sitting around him. As the apostle. And he had the pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist, and pastor. And as he was teaching, he had a commotion. You know, the teacher, the one teaching the children from the children's section, she couldn't hold herself. One of the children died. And that was when my father, Bishop Basile Dohasen, was teaching. And because he had the fivefold, exactly what David did, I was watching. And Bishop Dohasen said, shh. And he said, but daddy, daddy is dead. Daddy is dead. He said, shh. And the woman kept quiet. And he looked at one of the fivefold. I could remember vividly, it was Brother Joe, the one that was in the position of a prophet. He said, go, go. The word of God that I'm teaching should not be disturbed. Go. And immediately he said, do you know exactly what David did? The fivefold, he picked one stone. He said, go and deal with that devil that wants to cause commotion in the church. And Brother Joseph she was stood up. He kept on preaching. Before you know it, Brother Joseph Ozikwa carried the child alive. It wasn't Joe Ozochikwa. It was because the five foot, God has said it. He said, nothing shall be impossible. Australia is lacking this kind of church. My children, soon you see, God will start sending cancer here to be liberated for in this, create, in this expectation of creature is for the manifestation. Do you know why he'll be sending them? Because there shall be nothing impossible. Here. Yeah. We are ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Because I've been able to gather the fivefold. And I got a conviction and a revelation that proved all the snakes, 
everything that's been attacking you has just been destroyed. And do you know why I love you so much? If you see there, my spiritual father in Malaysia, he said there's no limit to your prosperity now. If you don't prosper, you are the one. Because this thing that has happened, if you read it, Pastor Judah gave. See, there's no limit to your prosperity. What did God say? God said, God said what? There shall be nothing impossible. One language. Church, do you know one thing we achieved even before now? We achieved one language. Did we not? We've achieved one language. And what did we achieve? We've achieved one purpose. How did we achieve it? We are all looking unto the God of Abishab Is that not true? Are we looking unto the God of Abish, uh, the God of Beni Hill? It's not as if it is different God. It's the same, but it's this. it talks about the calling. God told Moses and said in Numbers 11, he said, go and gather 70 people. Is that not? He said, I will take from your spirit and we are, not, we are one purpose. That's a sign we are one purpose. That's a sign, one God. So we've already achieved that one language. And one purpose. And God is saying, if you continue with your team of fivefold, look at it. I have seen this. The testimony I'm giving to you, I have seen it. God allow me to see it so that when we come, the same thing is possible. It means any cancer that enters here, we go away from anybody. It means there will be no dead. Church, you don't know the level we are now operating. Level of overflowing. Jesus confirmed it in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 18. From verse 18. He came to verse 19. And he said, we are two or three are gathered in my name. I am in their midst. And if they two shall agree as such in anything, it shall be established. He said in 18, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Corporate. No, me and my wife can't achieve it. Apostle and prophet cannot achieve it. We need the other three teacher, pastor, and evangelist. And church, I'm here to tell you Kabush Kabra Ma Unkataya. It has not been easy. We have had two, three overturns. But God says, I will still overturn until the right people for the success. You don't understand. It means you will never be sick again in your life. It means you will never be poor. There will be no attack. No, nothing can destroy you with this. Jehovah has already confirmed it. He said there shall be nothing impossible. As long as they agree to that. Our agreement is that you will not fail. Our agreement is that he can begin to speak our agreement. Our agreement is you will never be sick. What is it that Jehovah has said that will not be impossible? He said, whatever we agree. Look at what is happening in our lives. As of 2011, none of us has car. But today, every 95% of everyone has None of us knew our vision. But God has moved us. When it's time for us to start building our families. When it's time for us to buy our houses. When it's time for our agreement is that we will not fail. God say whatever they agree shall come to pass. Our agreement is that our agreement to God is that our mother that traveled over to Liberia is coming back with testimony. No disappointment any longer. Sister Jabe is coming back with testimony. One day, me and my wife, we presented her case before God according to our heart. But I'm telling you here that God is not going to do it according to our heart any longer. He's going to do it according to the 
part of the Holy Spirit, according to the plan, is going to do more, far more beyond our understanding. That lady is coming back with testimony. That is our agreement. And Lord, you say that nothing shall be impossible. When we come together with one language, overflow, power to overflow, power to overflow. God says that nothing shall be impossible because they are of one language. Our language, we can never be sick. Our language, we can never fail. We can never lose our jobs. We can never. Church of God Mission shall match on. Church of God Mission Malaysia shall match on. Church of God Mission Australia shall match on. Because they are of one language and of one purpose, they can never fail. Jehovah, Okoria, the faith of your son, Bishop Dahosa, that you have brought us here to establish, shall be established, shall be established. We shall not die of sickness, we shall not die of accident. None of us shall be poor. It doesn't matter the system of Australia. It doesn't matter how the dollar, the money of Australia is going down. Our finances shall not go down. Our prosperity shall not go down. The Bible says if they have one language, we have one language. The fivefold has gathered. Our language is that we will never be sick. Our language we can never fail. Shake a lekete mokoria. Ali a bobo 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 shaka boria. Do you know heaven have already sealed all these things? Look at Psalms 113, verse 1 to 3. It means none of us here, none of us here, every one of us is included in this common wealth of. Corporate grace. One of my spiritual fathers, when I was speaking with him, he said, Dika, I think it was because of you that the Bible mentioned grace, grace two times in Zachariah. I've not been able to check it. He said, Go, locate it. It's for you. Say, Grace, grace two times. Read that place. As you read that place, let me see if I can locate that place. Re- Psalms, I ask you to read um, Psalms 113, verse 1 to 3. See, the Bible says, grace, grace, two times. You see, that's the level of grace you're operating on in Zachariah. What a, what a promise. See, who is your spiritual father? Who are the people speaking over here? Oh, my God. Ah, Rakato. He says, grace, grace, two times. I found it too. <laughs> my spiritual father said this to me. Can you read that place first before we go to that place? Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Where are you reading? One thirty. Who should say that? Was it what I said? Ah, one three three. Sorry, because you are singing another song. Read one three three, one double three, and it's only three chapters. I mean, three verses. Oh, this is a blessing. My spiritual, he said, Idika, the grace upon your life is the grace that was shouted two times in Zachariah. Located, that's the grace upon your life. Lord, who am I? What is my lineage that you have loved me to offer? Read that one first. Behold, how good and pleasant it is. It is for brothers to dwell together. For brethren to dwell together. Read it. Finish it, sir. In unity. Mm. It is like the precious anoint, ointment upon You see, everybody is here. Everybody is their oil. How did this grace start? How did this uh, unity start? It started with the vision God gave me and my wife. And that's the oil upon the head of Aaron. So it means it's going to cover. Continue. Finish it. That ran down upon the beard even Aaron's beard mm. that went down to the skirts of his garments. But, yes. As the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. 
For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. In, they say blessing, the blessing there can never be. Unity, merely you are united, the blessing is already there. Now, church, are you getting it? God said there will be nothing impossible. You don't understand the rema. You don't understand what he's saying. Boy, oh boy. In the next, it can be more than 20, 30 years. I will start answering the father of a president. You don't understand the, what we are. There shall be nothing impossible. Nothing can stop glory from becoming the president that will change the story of Biafra. He said, there's nothing that, if it is God that showed me about Biafra, 15th of, uh, 10th of June, 2015. The Bible said, because they have one language, there's nothing that will stop Buhari, there will stop it that will make Buhari not, Buhari is nothing. Nigeria is separating. You don't understand. Nigeria is over 180 million. All the nations that are doing very, very well, none of them has that number. I believe America. America is a state. They came together. They have their, their constitution. Their, it's different from Nigeria. Nigeria cannot be one unless they make it the same way we are proposing. Make, give it, it, Biafra. It give us our zone. Let every, uh, every, every nation, that's what America is doing. 52 states. Of America, every one of which is what they produce, they use their money. Then they now they have something they contribute to it. Nigeria want everything you do every circle. If you bring it to our side people, they say they are called to rule in Nigeria, and Igbo people are called to do business, and the Yorubas are called to go to school. They keep on going to school and <laughs> just imagine their mentality. And when an Igbo man wants to rule, they say, no, it's not your, your portion is to do business. We can't continue like that. And if we want to bring something in Nigeria or do something new, they will first of all scrutinize it. If it's not going to favor the northerners, then they will either put a tariff high or they frustrate that thing to go off to die because it's from an Igbo man. We can't. I had a revelation. I had it unless I'm making it up. But if I'm not the one making it up, the same word God showed me on the 3rd of October 2003, Australia. He showed me on the 10th of June 2015. I said, Biafra is real. And for me, not to just believe, I moved, I put a leg faith on it and said my daughter I'm going to raise my daughter because Abishop Bessie the house said we are fathers to presidents I said God have shown me what is God saying God is saying if this be if you be of one language this shall come to pass I don't know your vision I don't know what God is telling you I don't know what you want to achieve God is giving you the absolute certitude That if you remain united, if you have one language and one purpose, it shall come to pass. Is there anyone that the devil is saying you shall, leave, you shall not live? You shall, it's a lie. We are saying on the contrary that you shall live and not die. Let's read that place, my spiritual father. Oh, it's a blessing. It's um, Zechariah 4 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, that thou shalt become a plan, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying. Look at it. Grace, grace unto it. Now, before when we started, me and my wife, this church, 2011, it was only one grace. <laughs> but 2018, today, you see, grace, grace. Double grace shall be your portion. Open your mouth and begin to decree. The Bible says, From the head of Aaron, Akara, Kiyako Shekete, Mukrama Karagada. 
double grace, double grace, ekelia, mukoro mukoria for my success. Double grace, e bakura kata, shekebo korima baba ba. Rebaka, he said, that is the grace upon your life. Your grace, the grace upon your life cannot be mentioned once. Grace, grace, kabo shakata, shabala baba, koremo koromo korea, he bakure keteya, he karala. Church, listen to me. He asked me a question. He said, how old are you? He said, how old are you? When I told him my age, he said, look at the kind of prosperity that God has blessed you with. Look at, look at what God is doing. Unless there's Facebook, you have a way to use a, a Chinese machine to, to produce those videos. If they are true and real, with what God has done with you in Malaysia and Australia, you have, you have touched that realm of speakable. Grace, grace. You are just, you are less than 50. And you have gotten to this level. Son, how I wish you will maintain faithfulness. How I wish you will maintain righteousness. There is nothing you have said that you want to achieve in life that you will not achieve. What was he saying? He was seeing now. Where God has said, not in church, that's your portion. That's your portion. That's your portion. In that your life pursuit. In that your life pursuit. Grace, grace is upon your life. Grace for success. Grace for breakthrough. Grace, Mokori Maba. Open your mouth and begin to thank God for that grace. Begin to glorify the name of the Lord. Shikabura Makoria. Mukere Mokori Maba Baba. Eh. Oh boy, my family have suffered. Where I was born. We have suffered. A family. Where we only eat meat at Christmas. Look at Australia. When I see my children. If you see this sometimes. Oh my God. Eh, it's, it's not your business. If you want to laugh at me. Laugh at me. You see when my children finish eating chicken bones. If you see the huge meat that's still attached to it. If you see where I'm eating it, even the bone, you know the soft bone. Krakata kata. Oh boy, poverty affected me when we were growing. We don't see chicken. When you eat chicken in my house, it's only 25th of December. And we start saving the money from January. No meat. Poverty, Melanie Fen. What? Now it's my turn to deal with poverty. Are you getting it? I have taken, I, I came to this level where God said, It cannot be impossible. And I stood on it. And today, I'm the one holding poverty. I'm dealing with it every day. I said, What you did to my family once, eh? 20 times. The story has changed. Why? I discovered the word of God. I held on to it. Church, what is that that is still tying you down? God is saying nothing shall be. We are united. We have one language. We speak one language of faith. As seeds of Abishab Ben Dahosa. We are under one umbrella. Church of God mission. We have one language. Everything, oh God, that have ever challenged my life, oh God. Everything that has ever challenged my family. Everything that that is why I'm telling you my next move is to eradicate illiteracy. In my community. God said, Idika, because you have one language, because you have one agreement, he said, nothing shall be impossible. He said, soon, you will see illiteracy destroyed, eradicated in your community. Church, open your mouth and begin to declare, as Jehovah has spoken, so shall it be upon my life. So shall it be upon my family. Nothing shall be impossible. I can never fail. I can never lose my job. I can never disappoint my family. I can never disappoint the church of God. I can never be sick. I can never have a accident. Church of God mission shall march on. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. I'm so excited because of the prophecy my father gave to me. He said, your grace is no more one. He says in Isaiah, locate it 
and immediately you find it, it becomes yours. Say, it shall be, say, crying. Grace, grace. Look at the story. He said, which, who, who, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become level, and he will let all see the headstone with cries of grace, grace to it. Ikabo Koribaba, what one grace was not able to settle in your life, this double grace will settle it in the name of Jesus. Whatever one grace was not able to do in your life, whatever miracle and breakthrough, that one grace was not able to settle. Now that you have moved to the level of double grace, 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 kabush, kabrakata, you shall achieve it in the name of Jesus. You're not opening your mouth. You cannot receive. By closing your mouth. This is a season of power to overflow. I'm already enjoying it. I'm swimming on it. He's already upon the head of a roll. He needs to flow from his bear to his gate. If you are not willing for that miracle, you can't catch it. I repeat, whatever grace, one portion of grace, was not able to bring to pass in your life, which is the will of God, this double grace is giving it to you speedily in the name of Jesus. It shall no longer linger. It shall no longer linger. It shall no longer linger. You are about to enter into that realm unspeakable. Paul said, unspeakable things we are shown unto me. A rain. Lift up your hand. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord cause you to trophy off with double grace. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Even as we share the grace in fellowship. May the grace